this is the 27th year of the community band presenting music to Missoula and Western Montana. Tonight's concert has a couple different themes. First, featuring mainly female composers. Many of tonight's pieces may be ones that are new to you. The songs also revolve around the concept of light as expressed in musical form. We hope that you find tonight's program entertaining, and we're so glad you're with us tonight. And I just want to offer that in, in a community where we live, it's so vibrant, an incredible arts culture with music and, and theater and dance and things happening all the time. It's so important to come out and support the wonderful live events that are happening. And so again, thank you so much for being here. Tonight's concert will be under the direction of Jesse Docknall, who is currently the director of Big Sky High School Bands. Jesse, who hails from Ennis, Montana, earned his Master of Music at the University of Illinois at Ur Urbana-Champaign, where he studied with Deborah Brickmeyer, holds degrees in saxophone performance and music education from Lawrence University, where he studied saxophone with Stephen Jordheim. He won first prize at the 2005 MTNA Woodwind Young Artist Competition and the 2012 Chamber Music National Competition, as well as the Lawrence Symphony Orchestra Concerto Competition. Jesse is a passionate advocate of new music, and you'll see clear signs of his enthusiasm for new music and minority composers as well in the programming this evening. The first piece is one of the very few featuring a non-female composer. The piece is a tribute to the impact and the life of the incredible David Maslanka. He was an advocate for a thoughtful, heartfelt, and committed approach to composing and to music making. He was born in New Bedford, Massachusetts, attended Oberlin College Conservatory, completing his master's and doctoral studies in competition and, and composition at Michigan State University. He was a very prolific composer with over 130 works for various ensembles, including a number for wind band and wind ensembles, as well as choral pieces and symphonic pieces as well. David Maslanka lived in Missoula from 1990 until his death last year. He frequently worked with local musicians and bands, including a number of times with our band as well, featured some of his pieces over the years. His eloquence and enlightened views on how to create music from your heart has made a firm impression on the musicians in this group. Tonight's selection from his library of works, Illumination, embodies the object of bringing immediate light to the world through music. In describing his piece, Maslenka wrote, illumination, coming to consciousness, performing music offers the possibility of immediate awakening. Thank you again for joining us tonight. I'd like to now welcome to the stage and introduce tonight's conductor, Jesse Ocknow.
selected as the winter of the 2017 Canadian Band Association Composition Competition for the piece you are about to hear. Imagine you're traveling westward into the setting sun, trying to keep up with the Earth's rotation, just so you can catch the last few splashes of color before dusk. The lyrical themes in this piece depict the warm, radiant light falling from the sky. Chasing Sunlight by Kate Nishimura.
constant presence of rhythm in our lives is expressed in this next sparkling piece, Rhythm Stand by Jennifer Higgins. This work brings regular order to all that we've experienced, playfully arranging and disarranging patterns all over the band. Higdon is a Pulitzer Prize, two-time Grammy winner, who has become a major figure in, uh, figure in contemporary classical music, one of America's most acclaimed and most frequently performed living composers. Please enjoy as we experience Jennifer Higdon's interpretation of everything from the pulse of the beating heart to the eclectic, everyday grooves surrounding us. Here now is Rhythm and Stand. taken by the Hubble Space Telescope, particularly pictures of the Great Orion Nebula, Barnard's Loop, M78, M33, the Molecular Clouds 1 and 2, and the Horsehead Nebula. You've seen all of those, right? <laughs> I don't know if the mic's not seem to turn on. So. I'll talk loud, OK? Composer Julie Giru states, I have journeyed there so many times in my mind, so I decided to sketch that journey with musical notes. Giru has been a true force in a male-dominated field. She is a recipient of the Distinguished Service to Music Medal Award, the Emmy Award, and was the first female composer inducted into the American Bandmasters Association in 2009. The Hubble Space Mission began in 1990 and has made more than 1.3 million observations since that time from its position 380 miles above Earth's surface. Please travel with the band in the journey, journey through Orion, 
as we explore the soundscapes coming from 1,500 light years away. Journey through Orion.
would now like to invite Nate Carnegie up here, president of the Missoula Community Concert Band. It's not been a few words. We got a lot of time for it. Okay. I'll try and talk really loud. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, Michael. And uh, I want to thank you all very deeply for uh, being here and for sharing the evening with us, particularly with the crazy weather we've had today, as well as, I don't know, I heard there's some sort of sporting event going on tonight. <laughs> but thank you for choosing us. We really appreciate it. Tonight is the band's 27th spring concert. And it's also now the fourth concert at which I have had the opportunity to speak on behalf of the band. And I would like to take a moment to say what a blessing and an honor it has been to be the president of this outstanding group of talented, creative, fun, and good-hearted individuals. So, since I, what I like to call my reign of terror is now coming to its end, I would like to extend a few thank yous and introductions this evening. First and foremost, I'd like to thank our concert sponsor for this evening, Northern Rockies Orthopedics. Uh, they are located currently in Building 2 at the Community Medical Center campus, but they are uh, also in the process of uh, building a brand new building on South Avenue. So they're looking forward to seeing patients there, I heard possibly starting in September of this year. Our concert sponsor, as well as the other sponsors who are featured in our program, help us to do what we love to do, which is play music, and for that, we are very grateful. So thank you. <laughs> Next, I would like to thank our conductor, Jesse Docknall, for being with us over the last eight weeks. Uh, Jesse has shared his enthusiasm with us, his talents, and his energy, and we have really enjoyed working with him for the last number of weeks. We are very excited tonight to be presenting a program which uh, features primarily female composers. And he has introduced all of us, as now we are to you, uh, to some tunes and some composers that were unfamiliar to us. Jesse's passion for the music. Excuse me. Wow, that's so powerful. Jesse's passion for the music, his deep knowledge base, and his sense of humor inspired us to bring this music forward in an exciting and heartfelt way. And we have been very thrilled to have him lead us with the band this semester. So thank you, Jesse. Hey, Jesse! <laughs> he brought his band club. <laughs> The Missoula Community Concert Band is a nonprofit organization. And without our board of directors, the function of the band and these concerts would be impossible. Before I introduce the members of the board, I would once more like to say a very personal thank you to the previous president of the group, Steve Korn. <laughs> thank you, Steve. source of knowledge and calmness for me, and um, he has helped me in so many ways, and I'm so appreciative of all his help. So even though he is no longer a board member, I just wanted to recognize him one more time. I would now like to recognize the current members of the board and thank them sincerely for all their help. As I name them, I will have the board members stand up, and please hold your applause until everyone has been named. So our president-elect is Greg Boris. Susan Hintz is our secretary. Amanda Tisch is our treasurer. And we have three other members at large who are Wayne Yates, way back in the percussion, and Jan Federson. And the third is Fred Ludy, who was not able to join us tonight for the concert. Finally, Don Gisselbeck is our librarian. So thank you very, very much. I wanted to note that one of the missions of our band is to give back to the Western Montana musical community. We perform outreach concerts with local schools. We try to do one each semester. 
And we are very much looking forward to traveling up to Sealy Lake tomorrow evening to play a joint concert with the Sealy Lake High School and their band. We have never played up there before, and we and they are looking forward to an exciting evening of shared music. <coughs> We also sponsor students to attend the University of Montana band camps in the summer, and we are a major sponsor for the Five Valleys Honor Band every year. I did also want to mention, again, Wayne Yates back in the percussion section, who has been spending hours and hours of his time repairing and updating various percussion instruments at Sentinel High School, which is where we rehearse and uh, whose instruments we bring over here for our concerts. Tonight we are playing on a completely reworked xylophone that Wayne and his wife Nancy just donated to the Sentinel Band on Saturday. And uh, I wish you all could come up and see how beautiful it is, the beautiful yeah. craftsmanship. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just lift it up for you so you can see it. <laughs> um, but it's a beautiful instrument and uh, we appreciate all the hours that he spent redesigning this. So thank you, Wayne. do contribute dues to play in the band, and we also rely on the generosity of our audience members to help support our mission. We have had discussions over the years about having a ticket charge for our concerts, but there is a very strong sentiment amongst the band for our concerts to be free and open to the public, regardless of an individual's financial status. We do, however, invite all of you to join us after the concert concludes. We'd love to get a chance to talk with people out in the lobby. We're going to have cookies and punch after the concert's over. And for those of you who didn't notice on your way in, we have an embarrassingly large instrument case that's out in the lobby. And so if you see fit, I invite you to make a donation to the band. Uh, and we appreciate any kind donations, and we promise that it will be used to support music in Missoula and Western Montana. I also just wanted to let everyone know that tonight's performance is being recorded by the Missoula, Missoula Community Access Television as part of a media assistance grant, which is donated to our band by MCAT. So if you are enjoying tonight's concert, which I hope you really are, uh, you will have an opportunity to watch and listen again at a future date on MCAT. Thank you for your time, and I hope you enjoy the rest of tonight's performance. Thank you. Thanks, Meg. What a great organization. You hear the list of the wonderful things that they're doing, and I encourage you to make that uh, donation if you can in the lobby after the show. And we'll continue. Shelley Hansen's inspiration for the next piece, Albanian Dance, is a, popper, a popular Albanian folk tune, Shota. It emulates the festive mood of a raucous village dance. Okay. Yes, I do. March of the Belgian Heritage? All right. Now, now about that. Pierre Lehman's March of the Belgian, Belgian Paratroopers is one of the more jovial light marches from the popular band repertoire. Lehman's was a Belgian composer who lived from 1897 to 1980 and served in the Belgian army during World War I and II. The story is told that Lehman's was asked to write a patriotic Belgian march during World War I numerous times during his active duty service. He never got around to penning the composition, and then the war ended. When World War II began, he was again asked to compose a march during a dinner with a group of paratroopers. By this time, he had retired from active military service and proceeded to compose the piece in one night. If you listen closely to this piece, you'll hopefully appreciate the patrol aspect of the music, where the music marches in from the distance, plays, and then passes. Please enjoy March of the Belgian Paratroopers with tonight's version arranged by Charles Wiley of Lamar University for American Instrumentation. Thank you. 
And up next is the Albanian dance. It's the popular, it's the popular uh, Albanian folk tune, Shota, that uh, was inspiration for the piece. It emulates the festive mood of a raucous village dance. Eastern Europe has long had a tradition of high energy brass bands, and this piece provides us with an ever quickening example of this energy and festive dance mood. Shelly Hansen is a composer, arranger, professional musician, and teacher from the Twin Cities has an affinity for writing and performing folk music. She received a PhD in performance, music theory, and music literature from Michigan State University, and you are free to dance with us. <laughs> this is Shelley Hansen's Albanian Dance.
final exploration into the theme of musical light takes us into Jay Bocook's <coughs> transcendental, uh, transcendent uh, composition, Into the Light. This piece features two main sections. It begins with the effervescent scale clusters in the woodwinds and melodic fragments in the percussion section. A reflective theme is introduced by the clarinets and develops into a majestic statement by the full band. The second allegro section begins with a heroic theme played by trumpets and horns. The second theme is then developed with an energetic cross rhythms and wild woodwind flourishes. Where else do you get to go and hear wild woodwind flourishes? <laughs> Except right here on a Monday night in Missoula, right? It closes with the return of the main theme in the brass sections. We hope that this piece inspires you and leaves you with a sense of celebration as we go into the light. I wanted to uh, extend my deepest appreciation and thanks to everyone on the stage and everyone that came to listen to music. Our art form is so vastly important, and I, I think especially today, every musician says that, especially today and tomorrow <laughs> and the next day. Uh, these two themes are very important to me uh, as of late. We need many more minorities, in this case women, uh, in the musical world, both as teachers, educators, composers, uh, to be recognized and performed, because that is my responsibility as a young white male. That's my responsibility for, as a teacher, as a musician, and a conductor. And I also just need more light. Thank you, spring. Thank you, music. Thank you, beautiful people that play beautiful music and just smile. And uh, I just love that we can put these two together and have you here to join us and share in that. So into the light. And thank you very much for your wonderful words for the band. Thank you.
concert band, everybody. It's fabulous. I want to thank you so much for joining us tonight and cordially invite you to stay and meet with the band members in the lobby, we'll have some cookies and punch, and another opportunity, please make a kind donation if you feel so moved to do so. Got a couple quick announcements of things and then maybe we can convince the band to play one more. <laughs> Remember Tom Cook's Monday Night Music Special, April 30th, on Montana Public Radio. Plus, fall fundraiser starts on Saturday. Where else can you make a contribution to support your public radio station and get peach pie or goat manure as a thank you gift? Yeah. Also, mark your calendars coming up, the fall concert, which will be November 5th, with Deb Nelson Rogarski conducting, and next year's spring concert, April 1st, will feature Lance Boyd conducting. Both the upcoming shows will be here at MCT. Have a wonderful evening, and thanks so much for coming.